Have you checked out all the new handicappers at Sports Memo? If not, here's your chance. For the next week, you can take 50% off any and all purchases using code TRYMEMO. This includes anything and everything from daily packages to 12-month all-access passes. Our new roster of experts is 30 deep, giving you tons of options to choose from. All you have to do is go to sportsmemo.com, choose the handicapper of your choice, use the coupon code TRYMEMO at checkout, and save 50% on your purchase. Repeat as many times as you want until midnight on Sunday. Welcome back here, guys. Welcome into Wager Talk TV for another episode of Puck Time. Happy Friday, guys. Hope you're having a great week. Hope you had a great week and have some best of luck during this weekend. But without further ado, let's uh, welcome in my guest here, my, my guest, my co-host, Carmine Bianco. We uh, don't have a guest today on the show, with just, the, just a really short slate here on a Friday. So just Carmen and I here breaking down these uh, handful of games. What's up, Carmen? How you doing? Uh, all all is good, Andrew. Um, only four games on uh, the card tonight, so because uh, the Montreal game obviously postponed. So we're going to cover also the Colorado uh, game tomorrow against um, uh, the Vegas Golden Knights. And as you can tell, I, I, uh, I had a long night last night out with uh, one of the wager one of one of our wager talk customers, um, Rob. Um, we went out to a steakhouse along with my brother and another guy. So um, we pretty much closed the place down um, after watching that horrible game by the Toronto Maple Leafs last night. Uh, yeah, Canada's team, please get, cut me a break. But um, but I'm, I'm geared up today. I'm a little fired up. So let's see where this show goes. I thought seniors had to stay in, man, past like 8 o'clock. <laughs> Come on, man. No, no, <laughs> Who let you out? It's Who let you out? Easy, easy does it. I, I took my Metamucil this morning. Leave me alone. Let's go. Come on. <laughs> I got to gotta ease the tension before I drop the fact that I'm pretty disappointed with the Maple Leafs letting myself down. Also, uh, our buddy Prez had them as well. Uh, top, you know, just look to see this Ottawa Senators team. They battled it all the way through. They managed to get the game to overtime. Of course, I had the puck line in this game. The Leafs win by one. In overtime, hard-fought battle from the Ottawa Senators. But uh, the NHL 5% run still remains at a pretty good number here. But uh, look to bounce back with uh, with another winner here, hopefully in the next little while with the 5%. But let's get talking about today, guys. Let's talk about today's games we're going to run down. Like Carmine mentioned, we will be talking about uh, Vegas, Colorado, uh, which is tomorrow. But for now, Sharks, Coyotes, Jets, Flames, Devils, Capitals, Rapid Revenge game, and the Ducks and the Blues. Karim, let's start here with the Sharks and the Coyotes, man. I think that uh, on the last the last uh, time we spoke about the Sharks team, I stated that they've kind of underachieved. You know, I, I always have done some slandering towards their defensive ability and the fact that they've got some older defensemen that might not be as quick as they once were, but they handled the LA Kings in back-to-back games. One of them was a one-goal deficit. One of them was in more convincing with a 4-2 win. I'm curious how you feel right now about the San Jose Sharks team as they go to head uh, to uh, Arizona. Yeah, actually, I, I uh, to your point of underachieving, you're probably true in that. They actually played two very good games against the LA Kings, who I thought, uh, uh, you know, are, are, are who themselves are playing some pretty good hockey. They beat them uh, both those games. I think it's actually, uh, you can look at those two games and look at it that it's probably it could be used as a springboard to these uh, two games that they have in Arizona uh, on the weekend uh, tonight, and I think it's on uh, I think it's on Sunday before they head home to face Minnesota. You can look at it as, as springboard because that fourth spot in the uh, in the West is still up for grabs. The Blues aren't um, taking hold of it. Uh, we know that those top three spots. Uh, are, are Colorado, Vegas, and Minnesota right now. But uh, no one seems to want that uh, third spot or that fourth spot. It's, it's up for grabs. They're one one and one so far in the series between these two. They only played twice. Both games have gone over the total. It, it's I, like, I'm looking at it, to be honest with you, Andrew, I think it's going to be um, um, one of those games where um, like a higher scoring game, the, the, you look at some of the games for the Sharks. The Sharks have had more road games, obviously, than home games. And I think... Um, um, a majority of them, not a majority of them, I, I would say a good portion of them. I think they're like uh, nine and I think it's nine and six or nine and seven to the over. So with that said, I'm, I'm likely looking for something similar to what we saw in that last game against the Kings where they beat them four to two. 
something that goes over the five and a half, but the Sharks win. And the Sharks are, I'm looking at, I'm looking at minus 105 tonight. So for me, I'm just going to lean to the over here and the Sharks. Uh, I think uh, if you if you're taking both, if the Sharks score three, uh, as Prez would say, you can't lose both bets. You're going to, at the very least, you're going to split out. But uh, Sharks in the over for me tonight in this one. I'm right there with you. And, uh, you know, I think sometimes it's okay to have a correlated wager on a game side and total. Some people might look down on that, but I think it's a good idea uh, to think that sometimes you might have to look at something and say, you know what, Sharks and over because, uh, you know, if they don't get that win, the game could still go over the total. I want to say real quick, Carmen, you mentioned the standings. NHL West Division right now, Golden Knights, 45 points, Avalanche, 45, Wild, 43, Blues, 37. Like you said, that four spot's completely up for grabs. But right now, just that top three is incredibly competitive, man. Like, it's very competitive. Uh, those top three is, is you know, obviously a few more games in hand for some of the teams. But I think right now uh, that division is a hell of a lot more competitive than people might think it is. And you mentioned that the back and forth with those two teams. We have seen overs with a total of five and a half here. Coyote's last game was three days ago against the Avalanche. And let's admit it, that's obviously way tougher of competition. I'm right there with you on the over. I think that uh, these two teams can get over five and a half. Yeah, and you know when you look at the division, uh, you, you can say, okay, well, the, you know, the Blues are in fourth with 37. They're only six points back of Minnesota. But, uh, or, uh, you know, uh, eight points back of Colorado and, and, and uh, Vegas. But none of those teams, Vegas, Colorado, Minnesota, are, are teams that, have shown that they're susceptible to losing three, four, five in a row, like we've seen with the Blues, Arizona, LA. So um, because of that, uh, eight points is a, is, is a bigger spread than most people would normally think. This is why the, the top three will separate and that race is going to be for, for fourth spot. And you have Arizona who are four points back of the Blues. You have the Kings who are five points back of the Blues, you know, with a game in hand and the Sharks. With who seven points back are still in it with a couple of games in hand. It all starts here, right? You can literally close that gap with a win tonight. Let's talk about the Flames and the Jets here, Carmen, our marquee matchup game. Obviously, uh, we see this Flames team actually listed as minus 125 favorites in this game. And you have to kind of scratch your head and think to yourself, and you and I were talking about this off air, uh, the Flames struggled against the Ottawa Senators. They had back-to-back -back losses in the last three games for this Flames team. They have scored two goals. One of those games being against Toronto and the next game being against an Ottawa Senators team, you had to wonder, did they just run into, you know, a hot Ottawa team, an Ottawa team playing good defensive hockey, or what's going on with them? Because I look at this Winnipeg Jets team right now, and I see success. I see high goal counts. I see high shot counts. I see relatively consistent goaltending here, Carm. So I'm a big fan in NHL handicapping. What have you done for me lately? What's your recent stats? Um, and I think everybody thought that Sutter was the best coach in the world. Sutter sparked this team. And I think we can agree right now, the coaching change had a little bit of a spark, but that doesn't last forever. And I think the Jets are actually in my opinion, the best team in this division. I feel like the Jets, the wrong team favored here situation. Yeah, um, I'm not really sure if it's wrong team favorite. I think you have to make uh, Calgary the, the favorite in this game, albeit the Jets are playing well. They got those two wins over the Canucks. And, and maybe we look at it that, um, you know, Vancouver – you know, Vancouver's been playing well, but they're, they're still not one of the four teams I figured would make the playoffs. Um, with that, you know, uh, in my eyes, you know, I, I still keep waiting for this Montreal team or the Montreal team to wake up to get into uh, one of those spots. I figure it's going to be the Leafs, Edmonton, uh, Montreal and Calgary would be the four teams. Obviously, that doesn't seem to be happening, but Calgary returns home. Uh, the, the North is one of the only divisions, and I talked about it, where the first game back off a road trip is actually a positive winning angle. Uh, not much, but it is. The other ones... Uh, we're like two and fifteen, I think, for for the bottom three or bottom four teams. But um, you know, we look at it, and we're like, well, they just lost a couple of games uh, to the Ottawa Senators. We saw last night what the Ottawa Senators did to Toronto. So maybe you know, it, we 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 actually look at it from a different angle and just say to ourselves, 
the Sens with you know with their that goaltending change and and they're just playing better defensively and, and they're shut they're shutting some teams down. Are the Sens a revival? No, they're they're still going to finish last in that division, but they're going through a spurt now where they're winning some games. So you know, beating Calgary two one and three one, maybe we look at it that the the Flames, much like the Leafs last night, ran into an Ottawa team that's playing very well at home. So it's their first game back. They have played well at home. Um, you know, I mean, other than that 7-3 loss to Edmonton, you know, they, they beat the Oilers uh, the, the night or two nights before that, 4-3. A couple wins over the Canadians, 3-1 and 2-1. We'll see. Uh, I, I seem to think or I want to believe the shine has worn off the whole Sutter, the Sutter thing and the problems that existed before are there now. Right. Uh, sometimes that coaching change is like when your car won't start and you and you spray a little bit of gas on the carburetor. You get it going, but there's still a problem with your car. So we don't know if that coaching change was like spraying something on the carburetor with the Calgary Flames. But with that said, I, I, I still have to lean at a short price on uh, Calgary tonight. But I will tell you, it's not going to be on my bet card. I unfortunately, sadly, have to admit, Carm, you lost me with that reference. You lost me. Uh, <laughs> I'll have to. Uh, I'll have to get up my car knowledge, but I, I know what you're talking about, and I do agree. I, I think that uh, this team is looking back and making the same mistakes they were making before. Uh, interesting though, uh, ten of the last or seven of the last ten games on the road have gone over for this team, but uh, not against uh, Calgary. Four of the last five on the road against Calgary have gone under. And I'm curious to see what type of bounce back we see with this Calgary Flames team um, as they come back and head home to play, um, you know, in, in their own comfortability, in their own arena as uh, Winnipeg goes to them. Let's talk about the Devils and Caps. This is obviously a rapid revenge situation here, Carm. Uh, Capitals win it 4-3. Um, minus 200 turns into a minus 220. Obviously, the Capitals, It's to me, it's one of those games, and you've heard me say this numerous times uh, on this show throughout the year, when a team wins a game, Carm, but almost doesn't win that game in the way that they might have wanted to win. Um, they win it. They see a W on that stat sheet, but it wasn't an impressive win to their liking. Do you agree that that might be kind of the, the type of game we're going to see here tonight? correcting some stuff even though they won the last game yeah it's it's unbelievable that these teams scored seven goals and there were only uh 46 shots on goal total in that game but other you know you look at it uh whether it's convincing or not at the end of the day the washington capitals don't care that they won four three only gamblers who have washington on the puck line uh or any other type of wager care they don't care. It's about getting wins. Sometimes you win ugly. Sometimes you win in convincing fashion. It's just the way it is. But, uh, you know, the Caps are 5-0 and against New Jersey this season. 4-1 four, uh, four and one to the over in the five games against um, against the Devils. And, you know, on, this is this obviously the second of a back, uh, a second of a back to back. But Washington in that spot this season is 4-1 uh, in the second game of back to backs, including um, one against the Devils, where they beat them in back-to-back -back games. It's the same. It's, I think it's the same scenario tonight. I can't make a case for taking uh, the Devils at all. I also don't want to take minus two hundred or minus two twenty. So I'd rather take the Washington Capitals in regulation time at minus one forty. That's where I am as well with this game, Washington Capitals in regulation. I want to make I want to make it very clear because Carm, I actually always say the same thing that you just said. So I don't want to be known as a hypocrite. Um, I always say, because I was a sports fan before I was a sports better. I played a lot of sports growing up, and I agree. These guys don't care about our bets. They don't care about your, your, your puck line. They don't care about your point spreads in the NBA. All I was saying was is that, you know, I've coached basketball and different sports before, and I've had wins as a coach that I still wasn't satisfied with, is all I'm trying to say, is that you might have, you know, you might have won a game by 10 points and felt that you could have won that by 15 or 20 uh, and that's all I was really trying to say. So, of course, Washington gets a W on the stat sheet, but I feel like they'll correct things defensively, and this one might even be more of a marginal victory. Uh, but I'm right there with Carm on this play here. Washington in regulation for our pick on this one. Rapid revenge spot, and Carm and I, we don't really see much revenge uh, going on in this one. Blues and the Ducks here, Carm. This Ducks team is our barn burner game, and I don't know why. 
Uh, this is on me. I just keep popping this duck steam into the barn burner segment. Uh, this should be in the dumpster fire segment because uh, the Ducks are a team that I'm not really sure what to do with. We saw them lose to Minnesota back-to-back times. Obviously, Minnesota was trying to get back, uh, get get hot after a, a rough two games against Colorado. Uh, this is an Anaheim team that's only won three games in their last 10. And as far as the total goes, I am going to look under five and a half here. I have said I've looked over over the total with St. Louis Blues throughout the season, but I've realized if you look down the list here with this Blues team, when they've had success, when they've had consistent success, it's not been in these sloppy back and forth hockey games. You look at a couple of their games, sure, they've won a couple, you know, 5 2, 6 2, 6 3. But I believe their style of hockey and what will make them a successful team down the stretch into the playoffs getting a lead and protecting it. So my play in the barn burner segment under five and a half here, Carm. Yeah, I can't uh, argue with that on that point. I think the blues are just happy to be home. Uh, if you look at uh, where they've been, they think they've uh, six games on the road, come home for two against Vegas, lose both of those head on the road again for another uh, five games and are now are finally home West teams. Uh, the lower three or four teams are zero and four in their first game back at home off a long road trip. Uh, do I think uh, Anaheim's a live dog tonight? I don't. I, 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 I don't like either one of these teams. If I'm looking at it, I'm looking at it from a total aspect like you are. <clears throat> the Blues, listen, the Blues ran into a, the, um, the train that is the Minnesota Wild last night. Uh, they're, 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 you know, they're looking for a win. Uh, it's Anaheim. It, they have to beat Anaheim. You would think they have to beat Anaheim. But do you want to... Do you want to lay this kind of a price? And then I can't even do the regulation line because I just don't trust this game not going into overtime. They're 4-0 against Anaheim. They've handled them pretty easily in some of those games. All of them were in Anaheim. And the over has gone um, 3-1 and one with these two teams. And yet, I still lean to the under here because I think it's going to be a lower scoring game. I think um, the Blues, much like they did against the Wild, uh, they they pretty much closed up that the center uh, that the middle of the ice yesterday, trying to slow that game down. Maybe they do the same thing against the Ducks. The Ducks are also a team that we don't expect a lot of goals from um, normally. So it's just one of those things where, um, again, it's likely not on my card tonight, but if I'm taking anything, I'm going to take the under here. Carm, do you ever play those overtime wagers? Uh, I know Press has mentioned them one or a few times. I know a couple guys that do bet those. <laughs> I just find they're such a weird bet to make. But lately I'm thinking to myself, uh, maybe put a quarter of a unit on it. Maybe put a, you know, a small uh, half percent wager on this 1% because if you're looking at it, some of these teams like last night with Ottawa and Toronto, you know, Ottawa plays Toronto tough consistently. I thought it was an unbelievable spot, bet on spot for Toronto with the rest and Ottawa's fatigue. But, you know, imagine if you had like a Toronto puck line or Toronto regulation and you said to yourself, well, if that doesn't win, I don't think Ottawa wins in regulation either. That's going to go. It's going to be a draw, you know, and you're saying to this point, maybe if the blues don't win, maybe it goes to a draw. Maybe you have a play on the blues to win in regulation and a half bet on the plus 250 or plus 300 for the draw. Yeah, it's, it's tough because you, you have to treat it like a prop bet. Uh, essentially, you can't treat it any other way other than a prop bet. It shouldn't be like a normal bankroll uh type bet where you're putting three four or five percent on that play but i do get it um it's like the exact score props that um i'll sometimes do in uh in soccer games uh it's it's a small portion of your bankroll you can't make it a regular sized unit and speaking of exact scores how unlucky was that boston um new york game we talked about the three two score line was either plus 750 or plus 700 either way and that game is 2-2 with three minutes left. And then the it was the, the, the Bruins, uh, no, the Islanders score to go up 3-2 with uh, three minutes left. And you're like, wow, this has a uh, it has a, a decent shot. And then like literally 45 seconds later, the Bruins tied up at 3-3. Th- at three, three. Off to overtime. Um, and yeah, and, and then it goes to overtime. But that 3-2 was right in that wheelhouse for that total of, uh, of five. Um, before we head to the next game, I, I want to mention... Uh, we talked. I talked about on yesterday's show the look ahead team, the Calgary. Sorry, not the look ahead team, 
the Chicago Blackhawks, uh, who I ribbed the fans along the way. I said they're in for a good streak. They've now beaten the Panthers uh, both games. They hit, they hit the road this weekend to face the Nashville Predators. Uh, this team has a good shot of going on a roll, and they were plus money in both games. They're going to be plus money again tomorrow against uh, uh, against the Predators. Um, eight games, let's see how they do, but they have a very good chance of winning six of these eight games. And uh, you have, I think, Carolina mixed in, in into that mix as well too, but, but I think those games are in Chicago. So uh, just keep an eye on this uh, Blackhawks team over these next six games if you miss the first two of this look-ahead team. Well, you know what they say, Carm. You you can uh, a team's only gonna only gonna snap their 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 winning streak once, uh, but they're gonna continue. You know, you could you could lose multiple tra- times trying to fade that win streak. So to your point, uh, you know, don't shy away from some of these teams getting hot and try and find a team that will get hot. Speaking of teams that are red hot right now, let's talk about the Colorado Avalanche right now here, Carm. Five one victory over the Vegas Golden Knights. Actually, after that letdown game they had against Arizona. Where they lost 5-4. The previous one to that one, though, was a 5-1 win. Previous to that was 6-0. Previous to that was 5-1. Previous to that was 8-4. Previous to that was 4-1. Before that, 2-0. This team is <laughs> dominating right now. They are absolutely dominating, Carm. If we go down the list and look at what this team is doing, and I also have to add in on my best bet with Thursday on the, on the card there, uh yesterday had the over five and a half in that game just squeaked it out uh getting the five one uh or getting the over five and a half so um i didn't think it would go that way that's for sure when i gave my analysis on that over i did not think it would be a five one contest here but uh the the odds have changed a little bit here carm i'm curious how you feel that uh vegas will bounce back um it, it, I, I don't think it's a thing of Vegas bouncing back. I just think uh, the Avs are playing so well right now. Uh, I think my uh, show best bet yesterday was the Avs in regulation time, and 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 that went uh, thing uh, that went well. Obviously, um, you know, I talked about the fact that uh, Petrangelo was out of the lineup. I thought that uh, uh, I, I did say, you know, check to see what uh, the status is on on Pacioretty because he was questionable. He did play, and he actually scored the first goal of the game. That game was won in the second period. Uh, Vegas had three shots on goal in the second period. The Avs had four goals, uh, and they, they literally put that game away in the second period. This team just, um, when when everything is going right with the team, it doesn't matter what line you roll out there, it just seems to score. It's a confidence that's uh, in that locker room, on the bench, in the ice. They just roll out lines. It's not like a team where... We need our top line, you know, let's, let's say like the Edmonton Oilers. We need the mcdavid Drysidel uh, line to score. Or in Toronto, we need, you know, Matthews, Marner. We need these guys to score. Uh, you're, they're getting secondary scoring. And when you get that scoring, <clears throat> the team is playing well. Yes, they lost that game against uh, Arizona, but it, it was at a point where they, you know, they rested Grubauer for these two games against uh, the Golden Knights. So they put in... Um, uh, Johansson or, uh, you know, the, who they picked up from Buffalo and he, he, he had a horrible game. They still scored four goals that game. So the team was still rolling. It's just their goaltending let them up. Uh, it's Grubauer again tomorrow. The line is only, <clears throat> excuse me, the line is only abs minus, uh, 155, 160. And that's probably, uh, it's a little higher than I would normally want to go. I always talk about wanting to go like 150, 155 because this Vegas team is, is, is a really good team, but at the end of the day, I just had a streak only ends once or when a team's on a great run. And for me, they haven't lost in regulation time in, in nine games. This is the team that you have to play tomorrow. It has to be the abs. Uh, you can make a case for quick revenge for Vegas, but it's not. You have two very good teams. One of them is playing lights out hockey right now. You have to go with the team who's playing lights out hockey. Don't overthink it. It's the old kiss. I told you. Keep, keep it simple, stupid. That's it. Take the abs. And uh, and and uh, chalk one up in the wind column. Let's go, Carm. Bring in the heat. Bring in the uh, bring in the energy and the confidence uh, to this game here tomorrow, which will be another what we'd call a marquee matchup. And I'm right there with Carm. I agree. Ride the hot hand. Ride the hot team. But guys, I'm going right back to it. I believe you have a talented goaltender over there in Vegas. But I believe this team has struggled more on the road. I think it's time we start admitting 
how much better of a team the Vegas Golden Knights are at home versus at on the road. And I'm going to go over again here, guys, over five and a half in this game. And, Carm, if we look at the injury list for the Colorado Avalanche right now compared to one month ago, that list is a hell of a lot smaller. And it's made a big, big difference for the Avalanche. They're looking like a much better team uh, on, you know, just recently. But over the past even couple of weeks, slowly getting players back into their lineup, it helps with that depth. It helps with their defense. And I feel like it's made a huge, huge impact. Uh, Carmen, let's get into uh, some uh, promos and uh, some packages that we have up for tonight, for this afternoon, for this weekend. What's up for you for this weekend, man? I am. Uh, I got a, I obviously got in late yesterday, so it is. Uh, no, there's nothing up yet at Wager Talk, but there are two games that I like for tonight, so those will be up shortly. There, there's no soccer's on an international break, so there's World Cup qualifiers. There's none today, so there's no soccer card up today. But I'll have two games up for tonight uh, in NHL. And then the weekend, I have a ton of soccer games, including a 5% play uh, on the weekend that will be loaded up a little later today. So probably a good time to grab that three-day all-access. You'll get every NHL play uh, over three days and every soccer play the next couple of days. It's going to be a busy card. And I know you're looking forward to baseball next week. It's right around the corner, Andrew. And uh, I've... Uh, if you do what you did in KBO, you're going to have a killer season uh, in MLB. So um, <laughs> so I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I'll have plays along the way in uh, I'll have plays along the way in baseball, but not to the extent that you likely will have uh, daily cards and stuff like that. Um, as far as my best bet for the show, uh, I think I talked about it earlier, the Washington. I don't want to overthink things. Uh, I'm going to take Washington. They're four and one on the second of a back to back. And I talked about the fact that um, they're five and zero against New Jersey. I'm going to take them in regulation time again. So the Caps regulation minus 140 as my show best bet. Before I get into any promos, uh, I know, guys, I'd like to give a different play than Carmine, but I'm also doubling up with Carm. I do back and endorse that play as well on the Washington Capitals in regulation. So that'll be my play as well. I know it kind of spoils the fun a little bit, Carm, but uh, you know what? That's a play I really like as well, and we can double up on it together. You can't. Uh, you don't want to put out a play. Uh, you don't want to put out a play that um, you're just forcing something for the sake of putting out a play at the at the end of the show. We agree. On, it's just like yesterday's show. You and Brian were on different sides of the total. It's going to happen. If if this is the only play you like as a show best bet, then that's what it is. Yes, sir. Let's get a winner for tonight. And guys, for my packages, uh, I do have a 5% college hoops play going off on Saturday. I cannot wait for the madness to continue. I hit a 5% winner on LSU last Saturday and a 5% winner on Florida State on Monday. Looking forward to Saturday's 5% winner, hopefully, in college hoops. Should be a great game, great matchup. I also have UFC plays going out for tomorrow, a three-pack in the UFC Absolutely can't wait for this weekend. Just like Carmine said, guys, be very uh, careful looking at individual plays on Fridays. Grab a three-day pass and save some money. Uh, best bets, of course, you guys can find those on the screen. We are both on the Capitals. Capitals in regulation, minus 140 for the both of us. And Carm, best bets have been great uh, the past couple weeks here on this show. I want to say a big thank you to all of you guys uh, watching the show on a day-to-day -day basis, all of you guys that reach out to us via Twitter and different social media networks. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Happy Friday. Have a great weekend. And we'll see you on Monday. Each and every Monday is $9 Monday at wagertalk.com. All daily picks packages are priced at only $9, including $40 5% best bets. As an added bonus, all new users will receive $25 in wager bucks credited to their accounts available for immediate use after their initial $9 Monday purchase. So make sure to take advantage of $9 Mondays at wagertalk.com.